Want to speak real Vietnamese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at vietnamesepod101.com. Xin chào các bạn, tôi là Linh. Hello everyone, my name is Linh and welcome back to Vietnamese Talk Words. Today we are talking about 10 phrases you always want to hear. Let's start! Hôm nay trông bạn thật tuyệt. You look great today. Hôm nay trông bạn thật tuyệt. Hôm nay trông bạn thật tuyệt. You look great today. Hôm nay trông bạn thật tuyệt. Hôm nay trông bạn thật tuyệt. So if you want to give compliments to someone that you just met or someone you like or someone you're into or someone you just simply want to have a further conversation with them, you can say Hôm nay trông bạn thật tuyệt. Or Hôm nay trông bạn rất xinh. Hôm nay trông bạn rất đẹp. You look pretty today or you look good today. Tôi nhớ bạn. I miss you. Tôi nhớ bạn. Tôi nhớ bạn. I miss you. Tôi nhớ bạn. Tôi nhớ bạn. Okay, this one is one of my favorite things because if someone tells you this one, that means you are away in their mind. And if you say this one in common, I mean between friends, you can simply say Tôi nhớ bạn. Tôi nhớ bạn. But if you are a woman and you are talking with a man older than you, then you can say Em nhớ anh. Em nhớ anh. And also, if you are a man and you are talking with a woman younger than you, then you must say, Anh nhớ em. Anh nhớ em. I know it's confused, right? But you get used to it because you can say it um, quite often or this one is very common. Uh, so don't forget to say, Tôi nhớ bạn. Em nhớ anh. Anh nhớ em. Bạn đã làm rất tốt. You did a great job. Bạn đã làm rất tốt. Bạn đã làm rất tốt. You did a great job. Bạn đã làm rất tốt. Okay, this one is uh, when you want to give compliments to someone or something that someone have done very well before. You can say, bạn đã làm rất tốt. Uh, bạn đã làm rất tốt trong lớp học. You did a great job in the class. Or, bạn đã làm rất tốt ngày hôm qua. You did a great job yesterday. Sẽ có một khoản tiền thưởng vào cuối tháng. There will be a bonus at the end of the month. Sẽ có một khoản tiền thưởng vào cuối tháng. Sẽ có một khoản tiền thưởng vào cuối tháng. Sẽ có một khoản tiền thưởng vào cuối tháng. There will be a bonus at the end of the month. I think everybody wants to hear this one all the time, uh, not only at the end of the month. Uh, so if you want to inform your colleagues or your friends are working in the same company, you can say Sẽ có một khoản tiền thưởng vào cuối tháng. Actually, this way sounds a bit formal and if you want to talk with a friend, close friend, you can just simply say Cuối tháng này có thưởng. Cuối tháng này có thưởng đấy. Sẽ có một khoản tiền thưởng vào cuối tháng. <cười> Bạn là một đầu bếp tuyệt vời. You are an excellent cook. Bạn là một đầu bếp tuyệt vời. Bạn là một đầu bếp tuyệt vời. You are an excellent cook. Bạn là một đầu bếp tuyệt vời. So if someone invites you for the first time to come to their house for lunch or for dinner, you should say Bạn là một đầu bếp tuyệt vời after the lunch or after the meal. Bạn là một đầu bếp tuyệt vời. But time to time when you're getting closer and you are no longer stranger or something like that, so you can say Bạn nấu rất ngon. You cook very well. Bạn nấu rất ngon. I want to say this one for mom all the time. Mẹ là một đầu bếp tuyệt vời. Mom is an excellent cook. Mẹ là một đầu bếp tuyệt vời. So you can put the subject before mẹ or bạn. Bạn là một đầu bếp tuyệt vời. Mẹ là một đầu bếp tuyệt vời. You are an excellent cook. Mom is an excellent cook. Hãy nghỉ ngơi, tôi sẽ dọn nhà hôm nay. Take a break, I'll do the cleaning today. Hãy nghỉ ngơi, tôi sẽ dọn nhà hôm nay. Hãy nghỉ ngơi, tôi sẽ dọn nhà hôm nay. Take a break, I'll do the cleaning today. So if you want to say to your roommate or someone you share the house or someone you live with that please take a break, I will do the cleaning today. You can say, hãy nghỉ ngơi, tôi sẽ dọn nhà hôm nay. Or a different way, hãy nghỉ ngơi, để tôi dọn nhà cho. Please take a break, uh, let me do the cleaning. Và bạn giành chiến thắng. And you win. 
và bạn giành chiến thắng và bạn giành chiến thắng and you win và bạn giành chiến thắng và bạn giành chiến thắng If you want to celebrate someone just won something or someone is a winner of the competition you can say và bạn giành chiến thắng and you win or you can say bạn là người chiến thắng you are the winner bạn là người chiến thắng và bạn giành chiến thắng congratulations bạn đã đúng you are right bạn đã đúng bạn đã đúng you are right I know this one is not easy to say all the time because somehow you find out that you are wrong and your friend is right and you want to protect the friendship or the relationship. So you better say, bạn đã đúng, you were right. Or you can say, bạn đã đúng, tôi sai rồi, you were right, I'm wrong. Bạn đã đúng, tôi sai rồi, tôi xin lỗi, you were right, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Tôi đã mang một thứ đặc biệt đến cho bạn. I brought you something special. Tôi đã mang một thứ đặc biệt đến cho bạn. Tôi đã mang một thứ đặc biệt đến cho bạn. I brought you something special. Tôi đã mang một thứ đặc biệt đến cho bạn. So if you bring something special for someone special too and you want to surprise them, you can say I brought you something special. Tôi đã mang một thứ đặc biệt đến cho bạn. And you can say short away. Tôi có cái này dành cho bạn. I have some things for you. Tôi có cái này dành cho bạn. I have something for you. Or, tôi có quà cho bạn này. I have a gift for you. Tôi có quà cho bạn này. I have a gift for you. Hôm nay là thứ sáu. It's Friday today. Hôm nay là thứ sáu. Hôm nay là thứ sáu. It's Friday today. Hôm nay là thứ sáu. Hôm nay là thứ sáu. It's Friday today. Yay! It's Friday today and you don't have to work tomorrow and you have day off tomorrow then you will say with your friend. Hôm nay là thứ sáu. Đi chơi thôi. It's Friday today. Let's hang out. Hôm nay là thứ sáu. Đi uống thôi. It's Friday today. Let's party. Or it's Friday today. Let's drink together. So you can say with your friends. Hôm nay là thứ sáu. Hôm nay tôi mời. It's Friday today is my treat for you today. Or hôm nay là thứ sáu. Để tôi trả tiền. It's Friday today. I will pay for you today. Okay, we just had 10 phrases you always want to hear and I hope you enjoy it. If you have any question, please feel free to leave the comment below. And please don't forget like the video, subscribe the channel and visit the website vietnamesepod101.com to learn more Vietnamese. Thank you so much and I am Ling. See you later. Tạm biệt. You just got off the train at the closest station to your friend's new house where he's invited you to a party. Which exit should you use to get to your friend's new house? Which exit should you use to get to your friend's new house? Although the east exit would have normally been the closest exit, it's currently under construction, so you should take the south exit instead. Đi cửa ra phía nam. You've decided to study a new language, so now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. 
Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. Xin chào các bạn, tôi là Linh. Hello everyone, this is Linh and welcome back to Vietnamese Talk Words. And as you know, it's going to be Earth Day on April 22. That's why today we will talk about 10 ways to save the planet in Vietnamese. Let's go! Tái chế Tái chế To recycle Tái chế To recycle Tái chế Tái chế well, as you know, uh, recycling is a process of converting waste materials into new materials or objects. That's why chúng ta cần quan tâm hơn đến việc tái chế rác thải. We need to pay more attention to waste recycling. Chúng ta cần quan tâm hơn đến việc tái chế rác thải. We need to pay more attention to waste recycling. Tình nguyện viên Tình nguyện viên Volunteer Tình nguyện viên Volunteer Tình nguyện viên Tình nguyện viên You know, in Vietnam, you have so many chances to be a volunteer every summer vacation and during that time, you can introduce yourself to people as Tôi là tình nguyện viên I am a volunteer Tôi là tình nguyện viên Tôi là tình nguyện viên Cô ấy là tình nguyện viên She is a volunteer Cô ấy là tình nguyện viên And you know what? Trở thành tình nguyện viên là cách tốt nhất để bạn rèn luyện các kỹ năng mềm being a volunteer is a good way to practice your soft skills. Trở thành tình nguyện viên là cách tốt nhất để bạn rèn luyện các kỹ năng mềm. Xin chào, tôi là Linh. Tôi là tình nguyện viên. Bảo vệ Bảo vệ To protect Bảo vệ To protect Okay, protecting is to keep something safe from harm or risk. But as you know, the more developed the society, the more it polluted the environment. That's why we should say Chúng ta cần bảo vệ tài nguyên và môi trường. We need to protect our resources and the environment. Chúng ta cần bảo vệ tài nguyên và môi trường. Chúng ta cần bảo vệ tài nguyên và môi trường. Or even uh, we have a slogan. Bảo vệ môi trường là trách nhiệm của mỗi người. Protecting the environment is everyone's responsibility. Bảo vệ môi trường là trách nhiệm của mỗi người. Bảo vệ môi trường là trách nhiệm của mỗi người. Chúng ta cần phải bảo vệ môi trường vì bảo vệ môi trường là trách nhiệm của mỗi người. We need to protect our resources and the environment because it's everyone's responsibility. Tái sử dụng Tái sử dụng To reuse Tái sử dụng Tái sử dụng Tái sử dụng To reuse Okay, reuse means using something again, whether for its original purpose or to fulfill different function. And actually, reusing old stuff is a very effective environmental protection solution. And normally, Vietnam we share to each other as Có rất nhiều ý tưởng về cách tái sử dụng đồ cũ lý thú. There are so many interesting ideas about reuse old stuff. Có rất nhiều ý tưởng về cách tái sử dụng đồ cũ rất lý thú. Or if you're online, you can easily see some articles like 10 cách để tái sử dụng đồ cũ đơn giản có thể bạn chưa biết 10 simple ways to reuse used stuff you might not know 10 cách để tái sử dụng đồ cũ đơn giản có thể bạn chưa biết Let's do it Bảo tồn Bảo tồn To conserve Bảo tồn Bảo tồn Bảo tồn To conserve if you ever heard in Vietnam, we have Sundong as the biggest and the most natural cave in the world. 
and we're not trying so hard to conserve Sơn Đòn from tourist exploring. That's why we say Bảo tồn Sơn Đòn là một chiến dịch đang được triển khai rộng rãi. Conserving Sơn Đòn is an implemented extensively campaign. Bảo tồn Sơn Đòn là một chiến dịch đang được triển khai rộng rãi. Or you can use the word bảo tồn in another way like uh, Con người cần phải cùng nhau bảo tồn thiên nhiên. Human beings need to conserve the nature together. Con người cần phải cùng nhau bảo tồn thiên nhiên. Bảo tồn Sơn Đòn đã là một chiến dịch được triển khai rộng rãi. Con người cần phải cùng nhau bảo tồn thiên nhiên. Giảm rác thải Giảm rác thải To reduce trash Giảm rác thải To reduce trash Giảm rác thải Giảm rác thải Okay, let's say unless you live a zero waste lifestyle, there is always room for improvement when it comes to taking care of the planet, isn't it? A little change such as switching to glove bags instead of plastic one can make a big difference in your waste output. So we can say in Vietnamese, Nhà nước đang cố gắng đưa ra biện pháp nhằm giảm rác thải. The government is trying to work out ways to reduce waste. Nhà nước đang cố gắng đưa ra biện pháp nhằm giảm rác thải. Or, Mua sắm thông minh cũng là cách để giảm rác thải trong gia đình. Smart shopping is also the way to reduce stress at home. Mua sắm thông minh cũng là cách để giảm rác thải trong gia đình. Quan tâm đến môi trường. Quan tâm đến môi trường. To care for the environment. Quan tâm đến môi trường. Quan tâm đến môi trường. To care for the environment. Quan tâm đến môi trường. I don't think I have to say too much about this because obviously we need to pay more attention to the environment. Chúng ta cần quan tâm đến môi trường nhiều hơn. We need to pay more attention to the environment. Chúng ta cần quan tâm đến môi trường nhiều hơn. Chúng ta cần quan tâm đến môi trường nhiều hơn. And also, đưa trẻ đi du lịch là một cách tốt để chúng quan tâm đến môi trường hơn. Taking kids out of the school to travel is a good way to teach them to care more for the environment. Đưa trẻ đi du lịch là một cách tốt để dạy chúng quan tâm đến môi trường hơn. Đưa trẻ đi du lịch là một cách tốt để dạy chúng quan tâm đến môi trường hơn. Sử dụng sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường. Sử dụng sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường. To use eco-friendly products. Sử dụng sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường. To use eco-friendly products. Sử dụng sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường. Sử dụng sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường. Some people think that it requires a lot of time, effort and money to make a home eco-friendly. And the truth is there are a lot of eco-products that you can start using right now which can help you to reduce waste. So please tell your friends or your family. Hãy sử dụng sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường. Use eco-friendly products. Hãy sử dụng sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường. Hãy sử dụng sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường. Sử dụng sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường là lựa chọn của mọi gia đình hiện nay. Using eco-friendly product is the choice of every family nowadays. Sử dụng sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường là lựa chọn của mọi gia đình hiện nay. Sử dụng sản phẩm thân thiện với môi trường là lựa chọn của mọi gia đình hiện nay. Phân loại rác thải. Phân loại rác thải. To sort the waste. Phân loại rác thải. To sort the waste. So waste sorting is a simple process that requires neither a lot of time nor any special resources. But why we should do it? Because the management of our wasted is a clean way of living that shows how much we respect the people close to us. And waste sorting decision we make today will encourage our children to learn and influence the quality of life of future generation. So that's why người dân nên học cách phân loại rác thải. The citizen should learn how to sort waste. Người dân nên học cách phân loại rác thải. Người dân nên học cách phân loại rác thải. Or, phân loại rác thải là công việc hàng ngày đối với mỗi người dân Nhật Bản. Waste sorting has become a daily routine for every Japanese. Phân loại rác thải là công việc hàng ngày đối với mỗi người dân Nhật Bản. Dùng ít túi ni lông hơn. Dùng ít túi ni lông hơn. To use less plastic bags. Dùng ít túi ni lông hơn. To use less plastic bags. Dùng ít túi ni lông hơn. 
dùng ít túi ni lông hơn. One of the simplest way to decrease the amount of wasted is to eat reusable bags while shopping instead of relying on a supermarket plastic bag. Bring your own cloth ones to pick up your item in Totem Home. Các cửa hàng nên dùng túi ni lông ít hơn. Shops should use fewer plastic bags. Dùng ít túi ni lông là cách để bảo vệ môi trường. Using less plastic bag is protecting the environment. Dùng ít túi ni lông là cách để bảo vệ môi trường. Dùng ít túi ni lông là cách để bảo vệ môi trường. Ok, done! We just had 10 ways to save the planet in Vietnamese. I hope you enjoy it and I really hope that not only in Vietnamese but also you will say it and do it in your language. If you have any question or recommendation or suggestion for the next video, please let me know in the comment below, ok? And please like the video and subscribe the channel or visit the website VietnameseSpot101.com to learn more Vietnamese. I am Ling and thank you so much for watching the video and see you in the next video. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại ở video tiếp theo. Want to speak real Vietnamese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at VietnamesePod101.com Want to finally learn Vietnamese the fast, fun and easy way? In this video, I'll show you the top 10 ways to get started. So let's begin. Number one, take your very first lesson. Access any audio or video lesson on VietnamesePod101.com and just press the play button to get started. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign up page to create an account. It takes less than 30 seconds and it's free. We have thousands of audio and video lessons covering a variety of topics like grammar, pronunciation, listening, and reading. Just click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number two, read along with the lesson. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript. These come with every lesson. The lesson notes provide you with the dialogue for the scene taught in the lesson, along with translations, a more in-depth explanation of the grammar and culture, and even vocab and sample sentences. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word -word transcript of everything you hear in the lesson. And the dialogue study tool provides you with the audio for the lesson dialogue, along with the translations. Number three, shadowing. Shadowing is a tested learning technique where you repeat what you hear. This is a great way to start speaking in minutes and practice speaking in general. If you're listening along with the lesson audio or dialogue, be sure to shadow along the way. Number four, use the dialogue study tool to master the conversation. Here, you get the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation demonstrated in the lesson. Listen and repeat until you've mastered each line. Do this until you've mastered the entire conversation. Number five, Use the voice recorder to perfect your pronunciation and speaking. In the dialogue study tool, you'll find a microphone icon next to each line. Click on it to record your voice. Then, compare it with the native speakers. Listen and adjust your pronunciation until you match that of the native speaker. Number six, review vocab with the lesson vocabulary list. Vocabulary words are the building blocks of language. You can save vocab words taught in each lesson by clicking on Add to Word Bank. Want to drill the words with smart flashcards instead? Just click on Add to Flashcard Deck to do so. Number seven, listen to the review track. If you've studied an audio lesson before, just listen to the review track so that you don't have to listen through the entire lesson again. This is a great way to reinforce the material that you've learned and it's great to have on the go. Just access any audio lesson and click on the download icon. Then click review to download the review track. Number eight, review with quizzes after the lesson. Once you're confident enough with the material taught in the lesson, be sure to take the quiz to test your newfound knowledge. Take the review questions and answer true or false for each one. Or take the writing questions and input your answer. Remember to check the answers by clicking on the check answers button. Number nine, participate and leave a comment. The best way to master what you've learned is to use it. Join the community of learners by leaving a comment below at the end of every lesson. Our dedicated teachers will check your responses to correct you on any mistakes or provide you with helpful study tips and advice. And finally, number 10, move on to the next lesson. Done with a lesson? Mark the lesson as complete. You can see your overall learning progress on your dashboard. If you particularly enjoyed the lesson, mark the lesson as favorite so that you can come back to it later at any time.
click on the forward arrow to move on to the next lesson and continue learning. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn Vietnamese, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. Remember, you can sign up to VietnamesePod101.com by clicking on the link in the description. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds, and it's free. I'll see you next time. Bye! Xin chào các bạn, tôi là Linh, rất vui được gặp lại. Hello everyone, this is Linh, and welcome back. Summer has come, and today we will talk about 10 things to do in the summer in Vietnam. Are you ready? Đi du lịch nước ngoài. Đi du lịch nước ngoài. To travel abroad. Đi du lịch nước ngoài. To travel abroad. Đi du lịch nước ngoài. Hey guys, I'm traveling abroad. Yes, I'm in the Philippines now. And if you prepare for the trip like that, you have to do so many things. What to do, where to stay, uh, passport, money, right? And if you plan for the trip like that, why don't do it now? So in sentence, hè này cả gia đình tôi sẽ đi du lịch nước ngoài. This summer, my whole family will travel abroad. Hè này cả gia đình tôi sẽ đi du lịch nước ngoài. Hè này cả gia đình tôi sẽ đi du lịch nước ngoài. Or something else, um, đi du lịch nước ngoài là mục tiêu của tôi hè này. To travel abroad is my target this summer. Đi du lịch nước ngoài là mục tiêu của tôi hè này. Let's go. Thư giãn tại bãi biển. Thư giãn tại bãi biển To relax at the beach Thư giãn tại bãi biển To relax at the beach Thư giãn tại bãi biển Everybody enjoys swimming, eating seafood or playing game at the beach But actually I only enjoy relaxing at the beach Because it's very relaxing, very peaceful, very chilling And I've been living in the city for so long That's why I really enjoy traveling to the beach just to relax And in sentence you can say Họ đang thư giãn tại bãi biển They are relaxing at the beach Họ đang thư giãn tại bãi biển Họ đang thư giãn tại bãi biển. Or you can say, um, mọi người thích đi bơi, nhưng tôi chỉ thích thư giãn tại bãi biển. Everybody enjoys swimming, but I only enjoy relaxing at the beach. Mọi người thích đi bơi, nhưng tôi chỉ thích thư giãn tại bãi biển. Mọi người thích đi bơi, nhưng tôi chỉ thích thư giãn tại bãi biển. Học tiếng Việt với VietnamesePod 101.com Học tiếng Việt với VietnamesePod101.com To learn Vietnamese with VietnamesePod101.com Học tiếng Việt với VietnamesePod101.com To learn Vietnamese with VietnamesePod101.com If you are planning to travel to Vietnam or if you love Vietnamese culture or you want to explore more about Vietnam, why don't you visit the website VietnamesePod101.com to learn Vietnamese and you actually can introduce this website to your friend or your families and in sentence you can say Tôi sẽ ghé thăm trang VietnamesePod101.com để học tiếng Việt trước khi đi du lịch Việt Nam. I will visit the website VietnamesePod101.com before traveling to Vietnam to study Vietnamese. Tôi sẽ ghé thăm trang VietnamesePod101.com để học tiếng Việt trước khi đi du lịch Việt Nam. Tôi sẽ ghé thăm trang VietnamesePod101.com để học tiếng Việt trước khi đi du lịch Việt Nam. Học nấu món ăn Việt Nam. Học nấu món ăn Việt Nam. To learn to cook Vietnamese food. Học nấu món ăn Việt Nam To learn to cook Vietnamese food Học nấu món ăn Việt Nam I really like Vietnamese food because Vietnamese food is very tasty, very easy to cook and very healthy as well That's why you can see Vietnamese people, they have um, very slim and thin body but actually very strong because the way they cook is very healthy and also the ingredients are very good very fresh and very tasty so if you want to learn how to cook Vietnamese food or if you want to try Vietnamese food why don't you come to Vietnam this summer in sentence hè này tôi sẽ đến Việt Nam để học nấu món ăn Việt Nam this summer I will travel to Vietnam to learn how to cook Vietnamese food hè này tôi sẽ đến Việt Nam để học nấu món ăn Việt Nam hè này tôi sẽ đến Việt Nam để học nấu món ăn Việt Nam nướng thịt ngoài trời nướng thịt Ngoài trời To have a barbecue Nướng thịt ngoài trời To have a barbecue Nướng thịt ngoài trời Nướng thịt ngoài trời 
everybody likes barbecue because it's so much fun and the food is really good. I love it. And if you are traveling to Vietnam, there are so many places they prepare for you uh, the place to have your own barbecue. And you just prepare your own food and you will have a barbecue outdoor with your friends. And if someone asks you to come to their place to have a barbecue together, they would say, Hôm nay hãy đến nhà tôi, chúng ta sẽ có nướng thịt ngoài trời. Let's come to my place today. We will have outdoor barbecue. Hôm nay hãy đến nhà tôi. Chúng ta sẽ có nướng thịt ngoài trời. Hôm nay hãy đến nhà tôi. Chúng ta sẽ có nướng thịt ngoài trời. Or you can say to your friends, um, tôi rất thích nướng thịt ngoài trời với bạn bè. I really like outdoor barbecue with friends. Tôi rất thích nướng thịt ngoài trời với bạn bè. Tôi rất thích nướng thịt ngoài trời với bạn bè. And please don't forget to throw trash in the right place. Tiệc tùng thâu đêm. Tiệc tùng thâu đêm. To party all night. Tiệc tùng thâu đêm. To party all night. Tiệc tùng thâu đêm. Tiệc tùng thâu đêm. Okay, partying is one of the best part in summer, right? Uh, drinking, meeting friends, meeting new people. And uh, especially when you are traveling in Vietnam in the summer, there are a lot of music festivals and they invite uh, popular DJ all over the world to perform in uh, the big concert. And let me tell you, the ticket is very affordable compared with another big countries or in Western countries. So, Why don't you come to Vietnam this summer and enjoy a big music festival there and party all night? So you can say in Vietnamese, Tôi và các bạn đã tiệc tùng thâu đêm cuối tuần trước. My friends and I have parties all night last weekend. Đi bộ đường dài. Đi bộ đường dài. To go hiking. Đi bộ đường dài. To go hiking. Đi bộ đường dài. You know, to go hiking is really good for your body, especially when you are traveling and you spend a lot of time on the way. So uh, you better exercise a little bit so you can get a healthy body. And let me tell you, in Vietnam, if you travel to Sapa or if you pass by Đèo Hải Vân, the views is amazing and it would blow you away, let me tell you that. So let's come to Vietnam and try to go for a hike. When you go along the way, you can see the whole beautiful, nice view. Uh, in Vietnamese, you can say uh, Bố tôi rất thích đi bộ đường dài My dad likes going for a hike a lot Bố tôi rất thích đi bộ đường dài Bố tôi rất thích đi bộ đường dài So let's come to Vietnam and try to go for a hike Làm thêm Làm thêm To work a part-time job Làm thêm To work a part-time job Làm thêm Làm thêm Nowadays, Vietnamese students, they really like to work a part-time job, especially in summer, because they have free time and they can have more income, or they can have more experiences, especially when they are going to graduate university or high school soon. So, uh, for example, me, this summer, I teach Vietnamese uh, as a part-time job, and in Vietnamese, I can say, uh, tiếng Việt là công việc làm thêm của tôi này. Teaching Vietnamese is my part-time job this summer. Dạy tiếng Việt là công việc làm thêm của tôi hè này. Dạy tiếng Việt là công việc làm thêm của tôi hè này. Or hè này tôi sẽ đi làm thêm. I will work a part-time job this summer. Hè này tôi sẽ đi làm thêm. Hè này tôi sẽ đi làm thêm. I will work a part-time job this summer. Vui chơi với bạn bè. Vui chơi với bạn bè. To have fun with friends. Vui chơi với bạn bè To have fun with friends Vui chơi với bạn bè Summer vacation No homework, no school, not at all A lot of free time And we have also Đi du lịch nước ngoài Tiệc tùng thâu đêm Thịt nướng ngoài trời Thư giãn tại bãi biển Có một làn da dám nắng Absolutely, summer is the best season to have fun with friends And in Vietnamese you can say Mùa hè là mùa tuyệt vời nhất Để vui chơi với bạn bè Summer is the best season to have fun with friends. Mùa hè là mùa tuyệt vời nhất để vui chơi với bạn bè. Mùa hè là mùa tuyệt vời nhất để vui chơi với bạn bè. Ở trong nhà và lướt mạng. Ở trong nhà và lướt mạng. To stay inside and browse the internet. Ở trong nhà và lướt mạng. To stay inside and browse the internet. Ở trong nhà và lướt mạng. Ở trong nhà và lướt mạng. 
Okay, some people they don't like to hang out in the summer because it's hot and it's sunny, and、uh, they prefer just to stay inside and browse the internet for shopping online or watch a movie. And、uh, yes, everybody has different hobbies. So in Vietnamese, you can say, "Cô ấy chỉ ở nhà và lướt mạng cả ngày." She just stays inside and browses the internet the whole day. Cô ấy chỉ ở nhà và lướt mạng cả ngày. Cô ấy chỉ ở nhà và lướt mạng cả ngày. Or you can see to your friends, tôi thích ở nhà và lướt mạng để mua sắm trực tuyến. I prefer to stay inside and browse the internet for shopping online. Tôi thích ở nhà và lướt mạng để mua sắm trực tuyến. Tôi thích ở nhà và lướt mạng để mua sắm trực tuyến. Okay, we just had ten things to do in the summer in Vietnam, and I hope you enjoy it. Do you have any experience spending the summer in Vietnam before? Please let me know in the comment below, and don't forget to like the video, subscribe the channel, and visit the website vietnamesport101.com to learn more Vietnamese. I'm Ling, and thank you so much for watching the video, and see you next time. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại. To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it. To read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Increase your understanding of your target language. And remember, if you're interested in getting all these review tools, sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start reviewing more every day. Hi everyone! Welcome to your monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is. The ten habits of highly effective language learners. So, what do successful language learners, people who set language goals and actually hit them, do differently? And are you doing any of these things already? Let's get into it. You'll discover ten powerful habits and how to apply them. I'll give you specific step-by-step -step examples. You can use these whether you're learning with our program or any other resource, a textbook, an app, or some audio program. Let's start with the first and most important one. Habit number one: set small, measurable goals with deadlines. Why small goals? Well, say for example you set big, vague goals like I want to be fluent someday, 
And maybe you buy a textbook, you read the first chapter, then you start wondering if you're getting any better. You start worrying you'll never be fluent, and you give up. If you do this, you need to start setting small, measurable goals. For example, learn 100 words in a month, or speak one minute of conversation, or do 30 of our audio lessons in one month. Deadline, November 30th. Okay, habit number two, create a routine because your routine is what will bring your goals to reality. This goes back to the first habit. Again, if you set a goal like doing 30 lessons in one month, you need to do one lesson a day and spend 15 minutes studying. Now you have a routine to stick to, one lesson a day, 15 minutes. Next, decide when and where you'll do it. Why? So you can make time. Make a mental note that this time is language time. And this is important, Say no to other things. Your language goals and dreams take first priority. Next, habit number three, don't cram. Instead of cramming or forcing yourself to learn for one or five hours, start small. Cramming may have worked for you with studying for tests, but language learning is a marathon, not a sprint. So if you do five hours now, you'll burn yourself out. You'll hate the learning, and that's not good. That's how you fail at your goals and dreams. But if you can do five to 15 minutes a day, every day, learning won't be overwhelming and you'll be successful in the long run. So how do you create this habit? If you've set your small measurable goal and routine, you're good to go. Habit number four, prepare lines and conversations ahead of time. If you're like most language learners, speaking is your weak point. And a lot of the time, it's because you just don't know what to say. You don't have the words in your head. This is where preparation comes in. So imagine you meet a person for the first time. What do you say to each other? Hello, how are you? What's your name? Where are you from? What are your hobbies? If you prepare these questions and answers ahead of time, you then have things to ask and say. So how do you do this? If you're learning on the website, check out our top 25 questions lessons that teach you questions and answers that we use all the time in conversations. For example, what's your name? Where are you from? How old are you? How was your weekend? Another way to prepare is to make a list of questions or phrases you want to say. Then get the translations for those. The point is, if you prepare lines like, my name is, I am from, this weekend I did this, the kind of lines you use all the time, you'll always have something to say. Habit number five, get into the habit of producing output. So input is taking language in, listening and reading. And output is putting language out, so speaking and writing. The point here is it's easy to just sit and listen and watch YouTube videos. You can listen to lessons all day long, but listening helps with listening. It won't get you speaking the language. So the easiest ways to produce output are, for speaking, repeat what you hear out loud. That's called shadowing. And for writing, write things out by hand. You can copy out our lesson dialogues or just copy the sentences out of a textbook. Habit number six, come back and review. And that's because reading something once doesn't mean it'll be in your brain forever. So this is where reviewing comes in. In order to master grammar, words, or phrases, you must go back and review. How do you do this? Spaced repetition flashcards are a great example of this. A lot of language learners use these because with spaced repetition, you get to see words again and again over spaced periods of time, and that improves your memory. Another simple thing you can do is download and save our lessons. Replay them later. Download our dialogue tracks. These give you just the conversation from that lesson, no translations. Make a playlist on your phone and listen as much as possible, just like with songs. Soon, you'll know tons of practical conversations by heart. Next, habit number seven, look for solutions. There's one interesting thing that separates new learners from successful learners. It's how they react when they don't understand something. Because beginners completely rely on the study tools they use, they tend to blame them too. You'll often hear that someone gave up because the textbook was too boring, or it won't help them speak. But if you realize a book won't help you speak, it's not the book's fault, is it? And if you complain that a class doesn't help you speak, but you're not raising your hand at every opportunity either, whose fault is it? So experienced learners look for solutions. Get into the habit of coming up with a solution for your problem. Habit number eight, focus on what you're good at. And you should do this because it's overall motivation. If you're generally better at speaking than writing, then you're more likely to enjoy it, which means you're more likely to continue with it. 
and that means it's a successful routine. Habit number nine is don't procrastinate, which is easier said than done. Most of us procrastinate, and a lot of that is a result of overthinking. Let's say you plan on studying today. So you remember, ah, I have to study, I have to study. Now you're ruining it in your head. It becomes something you have to do. It's a hassle now. But if you set a small, measurable goal and have a simple routine, spend five minutes, then you know you just need to put in five minutes and you're done. So if you want to beat procrastination, make your goals and routines easy. And number 10, remember that learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. So there's no need to do five hour cram sessions and burn yourself out. Five or 10 minutes is good enough. Remembering this is a good habit to have. If you're having a bad day, if you can't remember some grammar, it's not all over. It's just a minor bump in the road. Another thing that helps is considering the resources you use. Sticking with quick five minute lessons that are easy to finish will help keep you in the marathon. Now, speaking of lessons and resources, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Ultimate Guide to Learning and Mastering Language eBook. This is a 52 page eBook that covers the learning tactics I just talked about, setting goals, staying motivated, learning faster. If you're interested in learning strategies, be sure to download it. Next, the Sport and Exercise Conversation Cheat Sheet. If you wanna talk about sports and fitness in the language you're learning, then you'll love this PDF cheat sheet. And finally, how to improve your speaking skills. It's another language strategy lesson. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, because this is the very first episode of the monthly review, we're asking you, yes you, to submit a video of yourself speaking the language. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute audio or video clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode, so a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about why your worst days are the best days to study. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye.
everyone. Welcome to your monthly review. The monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is why your worst days are the best days to study. So, have you ever had a day where you planned on learning language and you just couldn't go through with it? Even if learning a new language is your personal goal, something that you really want? Well, today you're going to learn one, why these bad days happen and two, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. Let's start. Why bad days happen with language learning. When I say bad days, I don't mean when you're too busy or when life gets in the way. These things are unavoidable. I mean days when you're just not in the mood. It's a perfectly good day. The sun is shining, no bad news, but you just can't get yourself to study. You're just wasting the day. So here's why they happen. First, it's the law of diminishing returns in action. What does this mean? Think of it as eating pizza every day for five days a week. On the first day, the first two slices are great, but by the third one, you're feeling queasy. It's not as good. And by the fifth day, you're sick of pizza. That's the law of diminishing returns, when the benefits start decreasing over time. And it happens with language learning. When you first start, you learn a lot of phrases and it feels good, you're excited. But as time goes on, you don't feel like you're learning much, and this affects your mood and motivation. So you're not as excited to learn anymore. So you start having bad days. Second, bad days happen because you overthink things and ruin it for yourself. It's like dreading going to the gym. Let's say you went yesterday. You have to go again today. So you're dreading it all day long. Ah, I gotta go again. You set yourself up for a bad mood and a bad day. Third, bad days are a natural part of the cycle. Some days will be good. Most days you'll feel indifferent. Some days will be bad, but that's completely natural and anyone with long-term projects and goals feels the same. And fourth, you can't be on 100% of the time. So just like days can't always be good, you too can't always be on and ready to go all the time. Again, just a realistic and expected part of the journey. Now, let's jump into the second part why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. So, why will you get your best work done? First, it's not that bad once you start. Once you've spent 10 or 15 minutes learning a language, it's not so bad. People say the same thing about the gym. If you show up and put in a bit of time, it gets easier. Second, it's overcoming a mental barrier. What I mean is, when most of us have bad days, our brain automatically says, okay, can't be done today, stop, we're done. But if you just work through it, you don't take these bad days so seriously anymore. And that means you're more likely to stick with your language learning goal. This brings us to the next point. Third, it's your best work because working on a bad day only strengthens your habit of language learning. Remember, habits are what will help you master a language over time. If you can stick to a habit on a bad day, your habit only gets stronger and it will lead you to fluency. And finally, fourth, it just feels good to overcome something. Imagine you have a bad day, but you still put in 10 minutes of language learning. It's a real sense of achievement. And it doesn't matter if you do a 10 minute lesson or a five minute lesson. The fact that you made some progress on a bad day will give you the motivation you need to keep going. Now, speaking of lessons, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the best of 2018 language learning cheat sheets. If you want to get access to all of our conversation cheat sheets that we sent out this year, here's your chance. Download this PDF bundle right now. Next, the brand new supermarket cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn must know shopping phrases and vocab for meats, vegetables, and all products that you'll find in a supermarket. And finally, the most common adjectives. If you're a beginner and don't yet know these adjectives, then this is a perfect chance to boost your vocabulary. This one minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, everyone. 
Now we're asking you to submit a video or audio file of yourself speaking the language. If you do, you'll win three free months of access to our learning program, which includes your very own teacher. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute video or audio clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode. So a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to set achievable language learning goals and resolutions. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye. Today, we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.